It's 5 o'clock. We're going to call this meeting to order. And the first item on our agenda is approval of the July minutes due to the fact that August we didn't have a quorum. Anybody remember the July minutes? I wasn't at the meeting. No, the August meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. But July was in Donaldson, yeah. Okay, we made the necessary corrections for our motion that we accept the minutes as written. We did. I'll second it. Thank you. Minutes has been approved for July. Under the two thirds emergency vote, I would like to put Mr. Roy Katz on. Need a motion? Motion we put Mr. Katz on the agenda. Yes, ma'am. I'll second it. Mr. Katz, we're going to put you next, okay? Okay. I recognize Mr. Katz. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, there are a couple of the issues that have come up that we feel like we, we, and I'm talking about as far as the parish president and, and the staff is concerned, uh, and expresses some concerns about the advisory board of the mental health. Um, there were some questions asked of, of some of our people about um, the mental health board. The mental health board, board owns actually nothing. This is, this is um, a parish buildings and uh, we can give you whatever you whatever we have on that. The other issue is, and this isn't a lecture, I'm just telling you the, the way we feel about it and, and, and we'll have to work on the ordinance. I know Ms. Fontenot has spent a lot of time on it, but as far as the budget's concerned, this was prepared by the parish and it's done um, with recommendations from this board as far as advising us what to do, but the, the budget is actually approved by the parish and, and not by the advisory board. There's some questions about the director and the staff. The director and the staff report to the parish president and me as, a, as their supervisor. Um, that's the way it should be and, and there are a number of reasons for that. As far as the meetings, we've been told that um, we, we, Celeste will no longer be the secretary, you're going to have to appoint a secretary, and Susan can give you the reports on monthly reports, but we're not requiring anybody to attend these meetings unless there's a special request in writing that we need to attend. Uh, again, this is an advisory board. In almost three years, the parish president or council has not received any type of report from this board. And it's not, I know some of you weren't even on here, but that's one of the things in the charter, too, that the report of special interest or anything of that nature should be reported to the council or to the, uh, to the parish president. Uh, this is a very complex operation. It's becoming more complex than it was in 1952 when it was set up by the police jury. Um, we're getting more and more professional people in here, and uh, if some of you may remember when we first came in, the, the object was to do away with this board. And I don't think I'm in favor of that. I think it needs to be an advisory board. Um, you know, I, I, have some, I have some hard times when I think of a board trying to interview uh, a director or who the director should be and make a recommendation to the parish president. Uh, it's, it's just too complex an issue to be involved in that way. But what I've just told you is what the administration is asking to do and what it will do. Um, and if, you know, I, it's, it's not really open for discussion. We'll have to handle it through the, the legal ends, through the ordinance, but this is the way it's going to be. We can't have people, none of you want to work for two people. It's impossible. It's impossible to put this staff and, and Susan and a bind between a board and administration. You will never keep people here if you continue to do this. And Susan hadn't threatened to leave or anything else, but you just can't do it. I can't work for two people. I don't think any of you in here can. It's just too complicated and it's, it's, a, it's a professional type of organization where we're dealing with professional people and consulates. And as I said, it's grown tremendously since the early days of when the police jury formed this in 1952, which was a very smart thing to do, to do the mental health, because we're only one of two parishes that have this ordinance, uh, or millage on, uh, on property. Um, but the budgets are prepared. We approve the budgets. You can help, help us by adding things to it or making recommendations. 
But the purpose was, when this was really set up in October of last year when the audience was passed, to make it an advisory board. And it's got so fouled up. They had part of the advisory board ordinance in there, and then they added the rest of the old ordinance to it. And uh, it's just not working, folks. It's not working, and it's got to be fixed. And that's really all I have to say about it. Well, Mr. Katz, first of all, I do not agree with much of what you said tonight, but we will take it under advisement because I'm only the chairman. And number two, the people voted in a mental health board and a tax, a 2% millage. And the ordinance, I agree with it. I went to the, to the library last week. I pulled an ordinance that was, put, was passed in August. Then there's another one passed in October. And it seems like there's nothing but a bunch of politics getting involved in the taxpayers' dollars. And I did not know the cameras was going to be here tonight. I wasn't prepared for this. But we will come back with an answer next month. Ms. Fontenot. Well, I just wanted to say, Roy, I spent an awful lot of time on the mental health ordinance. I checked with parishes, other parishes. We are very fortunate here in Ascension Parish to have a millage. Right. It is very important and prudent that the people who pay the tax supervise the money. This ordinance has been around for a long time and to define the budgetary uh, means of the, uh, of the mental health board has been around since the ordinance existed. And we did not choose to, to take it out. And one of the people, Dr. Jan Krasowski in Baton Rouge, was one of the main reasons why that that is still in there, because she felt that that was important. And I leaned on her for a lot of things when I made this ordinance. I'm having some problem understanding what's going on here. We, I know that administration wanted to abolish the mental health board. That was the first thing that we were told in the summit meeting that we first had before we even got in, inaugurated. But I felt that it was important that people who understand mental health be involved in this process rather than the day-to-day -day administration who is just a nine-to-five job to them. And, and it was important that these people mind the money and, and, and keep up with what was going on in mental health, which is why I took, the, the, uh, I took it personally and got involved in it. Because everybody has somebody with, with mental health or drug problems, and it's a very important part of, of this thing. Well, administration didn't succeed in getting rid of the board. Instead, we got a new ordinance that we, I, I went bent over backwards to try to make it more friendly to administration, you know, to, to get some of the bugs out. I did that purposely so that it would, it would it would be more of a board. But from what I'm finding out, this administration is keeping this board in the dark. They, excuse me, Mr. Roy, I have the floor. And I'm going to say the reason why I, I, I say that. A grant that this board, you know, was involved in, I talked to Paul Keller outside of a meeting one night. And I asked him about the grant. Well, he didn't feel like the grant was necessary, so did you talk to the board members? He said no, he didn't talk to the board members because he didn't think they were worthy to be talked to. Because they didn't know anything that was going on, and he knew better. And I've been talking to him since. Administration needs to get the grants writer involved in this board so that we can help this mental health, that the administration is administering the tax, and help them get extra funds to do things. There are drug rehab programs that we need in Ascension Parish. We have a jail full of people. The sheriff right now is trying to make a bigger jail because he can't contain the people in the jail. Why? Because there's so many drug users. Some of these people that are drug users can be habilitated outside of a jail setting under mental health, and these people can do that. But they can't do it if they're separate from administration. Administration is separate from them. I have a big problem. I, I got the charter in my car right now, and I just read the charter. The, the governing authority, which is the board, the council, we create boards, we abolish boards. We chose not to abolish this board. We, create, we left it created. It was created in the past. We said, no, we're not going to abolish it. We're going to leave it there. That's our duty. 
it's administration's duty to supervise and, and do the boards. That's what the charter says. After we form the board, it's under administration. There's no reason why you should pull a secretary. There's no reason for anybody to do that because it's under administration. I suggest that if the parish president thinks that he doesn't want to have to fool with boards, then he needs to read his charter because that's one of his duties. And if he doesn't like the duty, then I suggest that he get another job. Any board member wish to talk? Well, I would like to say, uh, as far as the ordinance was concerned, uh, when I was appointed to this board, I felt that it was for me to learn the proper procedures and to see to it that we handle things according to the rules and regulations. And according to the first ordinance that I saw, we were operating according to that. Then we got the new ordinance, which we weren't sure that it was legal. Then we get another one, and we're not sure about it. So everything we're doing, according to the last ordinance, is contrary to the first one. So that puts us in a position of wondering what is going on. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, I would just like to know what is right for this board to do and what is not right. And if what is not right is not pleasing to administration, then we have a problem. Because I think everybody who put every member on this board is, is expecting them to be responsible for seeing to it that things are carried out, that money is are handled, programs are found like they're supposed to be found with the interests of those people who fall under the heading of mental health and substance abuse. We're not, uh, or might I say, I'm not totally interested in the outlook of the offices and all this kind of stuff. I'm concerned about prevention for the people. I think that should be all of our interest. So whatever it takes, and, and I'm grateful for Ms. Cheryl because uh, she looks up stuff, <coughs> and anything that uh, I might ask her, uh, she'll look it up and find out just what it is because it's too much that's contrary to, to what we have to do. So we, we just need a straight line, and we can go from there. Mr. Day. Sir. So I, I, I just want to say that uh, and I know that I, I respect Ms. Fontenot because I know the effort she put into it and I know we both have some personal issues involved in this in this mental health problem and as she said that a lot of people do have it. Ronnie was not against this board. Ronnie signed this ordinance when it was passed in October of 2004. Uh, our main concern is that it was an advisory panel. We have what we wanted was, when we talked to Jan, and I was in some of the meetings with uh, Dr. Jan also, was to form an advisory panel of diverse backgrounds uh, and cultures, Donaldsonville, Santa Mar, Gonzales, all the areas around here, and come up with ways of improving what we're doing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what essentially we were after. Um, I don't think Susan has any problem with giving you people a report of what's going on, and I don't think we have a problem with recommending the budget and asking how we're doing. But I'm just saying that it's, it's just something that the budget is presented and it's approved by the parish. And, and my main concern is that there's still, you cannot work for two people. You just can't do it. You can't satisfy this board. You can't satisfy the administration. You're constantly caught in the middle of what's going on. And that's all I'm saying with all of this. Uh, uh, we have pulled secretaries from the other boards, and they're appointing their own people. I mean, we've got secretaries that are working for the parish that have been taking meetings at the meetings, uh, at the, the board meetings. And this is, folks, it's not a war. I'm just trying to straighten things out to where we can do what's best as far as a professional atmosphere for the mental health in this field. We have not. Whether it's, whether it's under this or whatever it was under, we have not received one complaint, and you can be thankful for this from what you all have done and what we have done, one complaint from one patient in the last three years that I've been here. But when I look back at some of the changes that were made in 93 and 94, when it took doctors or psychiatry couldn't even be the head of a board, couldn't be a head of the clinic. They had to have a certain Ms. license. They, they, wait a minute, they got down to a certain limit where it could just be an LCWS. 
Everything else was thrown out. Now, I'm sorry, but I don't want that to happen again. And I'm not saying it will. But we've got to get politics, as you said, Ms. Goodrell, out of this issue altogether. This is a professional organization with professional people, professional counselors that are dealing with our future, the kids. Mr. Pat, we do not have anything to do with our professional part of this operation. And by the ordinance, and if I'm wrong, maybe next time you can correct me, but by the ordinance, we hire a mental health director for the mental health board, just like the major drainage board has the right to hire their own director. And if that's wrong, we need, you're right, we need to go back and visit that order. Number two, the voters voted in this 2% millage and they voted in a board to handle the money, to keep politics out of it. And right now we have more politics involved in it, and who knows in two years whether this same vote, and every four years this board is going to go through this kind of, I'd like to say crap, but I didn't. How are we going to run an organization that helps the people out there when you constantly do not know the rules and regulations. You can't send a child to school if he don't know every day that the rules and regulations are not going to change. With, with all due respect to Ms. Fontenot, to myself, because I had, I had some say-so in this, okay? The ordinance has contradictory statements in it. And it needs to be cleaned up. We're going to have a lawyer at our next meeting to explain what and it needs to be cleaned right up. is. Because there are a lot of there are several conflicts and contradictions in what was done. If you look at it, it was done A through F. The second page goes A through F, and then it keeps adding on what the old one was. And, and I don't think that was up F five. They don't even have that in the thing. So I know. So I've we've got some problems with it, and we need to address it. And I want to thank you all for your time. It's not argumentative. I just wanted to tell you what our what our feelings are. Well, with the respect that this board has been showed. And some of the email that has gone through the air, I guarantee you when we come back next month, people can either vote to keep this board, the people and their 2% millage, or when it goes back up, they can take it and give it to politicians. That's the people's right. Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I just want to say, you know, Roy, these people have been looking, they, they have a right to look over the budget. Mm -hmm. They, they don't make the budget. The budget is made by administration. And they have the right to look over the budget to see if there's things that they don't want to pay for with mental health funds. They're the guardians and the keepers of the, of the people's funds. And so they've got, they've got the right to look at it. And instead they're handed this little bit. I, I got all the information in the car. I didn't bring it because I didn't think this was going to be this kind of meeting. And I certainly didn't know the cameras were going to be here. But that's fine. The, the, the budgetary thing that they were given was didn't have any explanation, so a special meeting had to be called, which was absolutely awesome. Everything got settled real easy. There was no conflict because somebody was there to explain. Had administration done that the first time, there wouldn't have even been the special meeting called. But instead, they had to have a special meeting. Why? Because they get the budget thing on the 15th of uh of a month and have to turn it in by the 17th. Let me interrupt you. If we had had the board meeting, the last August board meeting, we would have made all of those explanations at that meeting. So right. Well, that, that board didn't come to that meeting, so we didn't well, have it. That's there are things that happen when you have five people, you know, only five people, and I don't think they've ever had that many board meetings that miss, and I knew Miss Italia was, uh, was ill, mm -hmm. and Miss um, Z was t stuck in traffic in Baton Rouge, so things like that happen, and that's going to happen. Uh, it's happened on our council, and we're pretty faithful to our meetings. But what I'm saying is that they asked y'all for a printout sheet, and it was like that maybe that they, because you indicated that you didn't even know if they could be given that. The, re the reason for that, though, is there are employee names on there, and I had to check with HR to see if we could put All those names and print salaries. Yeah. Oh, names on the printout sheet. Employee. Names and salaries were on the on the printout sheet, and I just needed to check to see that well, that's okay to distribute. I Ms. Mendendorf, you know. Uh, it's Dr. Mendendorf. Do doctor, I'm sorry. Uh, there's public information laws that even the public yeah, that's can That's exactly what, what exactly. Mr. Katz said. You know, so, so, I, I mean, so you have them. And, and that's why I'm saying if, if the board is looking, 
looking for, for information, administration should be willing to provide it. And, and Roy, I mean, I'm sorry, but administration sometimes is very hard to get information out, even for the council. Well, I, and, I, and I'm not going to address anybody else. If anybody wants to talk to me from, from Human Human Resources, I'll give you whatever you need. And, and I can't, you know, that's just the way I believe that we, we ought to operate. But again, there's some things that, you know, there's, like I said earlier, the, these reports to the council, we're supposed to be coming back with things, and, and I've addressed this, this board before about this. What do we need to do to improve the mental health in this parish? And I can tell you, there are a lot of things. I've talked about it in Donaldsonville, and maybe that's because where I'm from. People don't use the services. They need it. How do you get to them? You know, this is things that we need to find out. This is things of, of uh, you know, kids using the drugs and alcohol. Where are our problems with this? The diverse culture and the diverse group was put together, and that's, that's one of the main things that I think, you know, I have no problem with overlooking the budget. Anything that Celeste and them have that you want to look at, I have no problem with it. And I don't think any of us do. But the problem is, is coming around as to what you, and I think you said it very specifically, what do you, what do you need, what are your goals, and where you need to go with this? And I think all I hear is every time I come in here is, you know, either the attacking of the administration or the finances. That's the main thing, and that's been, since, since we've been in, it's been a discussion of the finances. Ms. Susan, so, did we get a list of our employees and their salaries? Tonight. So oh, it's in my... It's right here. Oh, okay. What you didn't get was a list of everything that you asked for all of the... Whether uh, they have... Uh, we're not going to provide... Cell phones you're not going to provide? Their benefits you're not going to provide? I have a cell phone. What else did Celeste I... Celeste has a cell phone and Stacy Morrow has a cell phone paid by the parish. Okay. And travel is on a cost reimbursement basis, so I never know in any given month who's going right. to be paid any mileage. And they have dental, and all of this the same as the, the, the same as the rest of the parish employees, the same other coverages. Okay, and it's on good. there by, based on their, well, on their level. See it. Okay, very good. Thank you. In fact, you. also, in that. fact, I'll one other thing I'd like to too. say is, if we're going to go to the council with because we feel like well, we've got some real problems with salaries, and that's one of the main problems we're having. You get a young person that comes in here and works one or two years, gets the license and permit, and moves on. Now, we can't compare with industry or the hospitals and everything else, but we offer benefits, and if it's the local people, they'll stay here. And that's what we're shooting for, is to stop whatever's going on, and, and part of it is the salary problem. And so we're, we're talking to the council, and we're working with that on, on surveys that we've done. But folks, it's, it's not a war. We just want to try to make it to where the strain, the, the, the strain is not put on the people here that need to be devoting their time and effort and energy is to treat our young people. Well, I think it's true politics, and I do not think that our staff is not taking care of the public very well. I have heard no complaints about anybody from this that's been through this thing. So I do not think that any of this should go as far down as our employees. It remains between the politicians and this board and that ordinance. If, if you don't like the wording, and we listen to you explain it once before, and when you told us how you read it, it was totally different from the way we read it. We've had an attorney tell us that the way we read it is right, and you say the way you read it is right, which is okay with me. But we will have an attorney here at our next board meeting, whether it's in this room or whether it's wherever the parish president dictates that we have it at. We will have a lawyer to explain that order. How are you going to pay I will pay him, Miss Susan, if I have to pay him out of my pocket. I, I, would, I would think the mental health board could probably make a. Uh, we have always had legal. They've been. They should be able to. Uh, to at least be able to hire. Uh, I think they have an attorney. If I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, one of the things I just wanted to say about the. Uh, the budget in, you know. This board understands that administration makes the budget. They merely review the budget, and the ordinance says if they want to make some changes, they make the changes and send it back to the parish president, mm -hmm. and that the parish president cannot send it to the council unless he notifies the board that he's made changes that they made. 
the we ultimately pass the budget, and yes, right. uh, you know, and and we can decide to side with the board. That's our call. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's there's no discrepancy there, Roy. It's very very simple. Administration makes the budget. The the board overlooks the budget, defines to define what the needs are, and if they think that there's too much money going for something that they deem as waste and not not deemed good for mental health, then they have the right to make that suggestion to the past president. And if he decides that that's not what he wants to do in there, then he's got to notify them and us that these changes are being done so that we can decide if we want to go with their, their budget <coughs> recommendations or the past president's. We the final say. Oh, and that's just the way it is. I know. And there's nothing very hard in there. It's very clear. I know that it's clear. I wrote it. If I didn't write that part. That part was actually coming out of the past ones, out of the past ordinances, but it's very, very clear, the, the process. They don't have the right to go write checks and to do this and that and the other. They don't go do that. But they do have a say in how the money is spent. All right, let's, let's talk about something else. One other, excuse me, may I have, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay. The thing that's very, still very cloudy to me with the way this, the way this ordinance is written is that this board has the right to pick a director. Right. This board has the right to pick counselors. No. No. We no, have a right to see approve. who approve. approve. That's right. And that is to keep someone from hiring friends, family, or something down the line. And I'm not saying this for her. I'm saying this. This was to keep politics and families and people from putting some of their family in positions where they shouldn't, where they're not qualified to be him. And, and, that's and she's she's right. I mean, every four years we've changed administration. You know, Susan's here now. She's doing a fine job. You know. The, this board doesn't know that as soon as another parish president comes along, besides, well, they want to put somebody yes, that they know. Place. This That's board right. can protect her job. Well, I just, you know, it, it's gotten it's gotten too professional. You can call it politics or whatever you want, but it's gotten too professional, too big of an organization, too much liability put out there to have two bosses, and that's... There's, where's the two bosses, Ron? I'm telling you, we hear it where? all the time. That's, so, that's my question. Where's the two when bosses? When you make the statement about working for two people or two bosses, what what do you really mean? Uh, who are you really the, talking Well, about? I'm talking about the consulates, for example. Okay. The board in the parish. Okay. The, board the board in the, in the parish, parish is, is what the conflicts are. The okay, so that's not with us. No. The, 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 the problem the about that is not with this board. No, the board, this board, between the board and the parish is the conflict. It's the conflict I feel. It's the conflict I feel. And I don't feel that we have a conflict with the council at all. I don't. Not the council. With, 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 uh, with, the, with, with the administration. Between the board and the administration. You're having a conflict with this board. No, I'm I'm caught between the board and the administration. That's that's the concern. That's my concern. Right, like I said, we we will work that out with an attorney. At our next meeting, and he will read that ordinance and tell us exactly how it goes. So it's really not this board's yes. fault. Perhaps we could maybe put it on the ordinance to well, Oh, definitely the ordinance. Okay. That's right. So as far as I ordinance. am concerned, this board has done a fantastic job in spite of why we're here. But because we're here, for the reason that we're here, it caused us to get the information and stuff that we've been asking for for quite some time. And I know you're, never, you're not here at all the meetings, so there's some things you really don't know. You know, and there are times where I felt maybe we should have talked to you one-on-one -on -one instead of just letting things go too far. But that's our point, is not letting things go too far. Uh, if, if there was a time when it was stated that we weren't going to have a secretary, Celeste does a fantastic job. Anything we ask her, she has an answer right then and there. But to have someone that doesn't know, as Cheryl has said, uh, exactly what's going on is going to pose a problem. But we can work with that because we have some people that do know how things are supposed to go. Okay, so what I'm saying is this board is not really responsible for some things that has transpired within the last three months that has come up. Okay, we're not responsible for that. We got put in the middle of some stuff that we didn't even know what was going on. And I think that was the, the match that lit the flame to... The what, emails you know, to, to what we are, we're going through now. You know well, let's let's just get back back to the let's get back to the agenda tonight. And, well, uh, I thank y'all for the time, the effort, and, and what you put into it. And and I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, 
when I come in here. I, I, I understand, and I guess one of the things, that, the last thing I'll say about it is, again, that it's in there, in the official title, is an advisory board. But y'all changed yeah. that, too, and you can read it on the wall going out the door. I didn't change no. that. No, did. Somebody did, because it's written on that picture up there. I didn't change It was that. changed, though. It the changed. board, this board was advised, when, when Ms. Fondo put, together, put it together, the title of this organization was changed and the board became an advisory board. But in 1952, it was not. And like I said, let's get on with this. Okay. We will well, come back right. at the next meeting. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to ask, were, were some of the changes because it has become much more of a professional organization because you referred to that several times and mm -hmm. I guess my feeling about that is that we expect as a citizen of this parish I expect that it would be a professional organization run by professionals I mean mental health needs to be run by professionals and I don't see us as micromanaging um, the, the agency I don't want to do that that's not why I got on the board but I do think that um, we represent the people Mm -hmm. and that this board is a, a, an important uh, mechanism to represent the people of the parish. So I think that to confuse whether the, the organization is professional or not, um, to me that's irrelevant. It, it, we expect that it would be professional, yeah. and I'm not trying, I don't think anybody here expects that we would um, administer or micromanage the organization. I, I, I'm not interested in that at all. Well, I, I appreciate that, and I, and I think we do. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's not one of the things that, and we did talk about. We talked about addressing all of the boards when Riley took over. It wasn't just the mental health board. There were other boards that we looked at. We did away with some of them in in, uh, in recreation that we had that were just not there. We we still f sitting with a bingo board. You know, we got people on that. We had a board for the Ascension. Activity center in Sorrento that had never met. So it's not saying that this is more important or less important. It was just something that we needed to address all the boards. And and this is very <coughs> special to me, particularly that I wanted to see see it run right. Not because I'm a supervisor, because I'm a parent. You think it's not run right? I, I'm not saying that, Mrs. I Daddy. think it's time we move on. Please, let's okay. let's no more Thank comments because it's going to get. Thank you. Yes, sir. Miss Susan. Oh, I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I lost my cool. I, I think your handouts are all in, in the packet. Right? Okay. So, okay. so first of all, I wanted to know if anyone had any questions. I had passed out the admission criteria at the last room? meeting. The admission Anybody criteria? That's Susan's one. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Sorry. That's okay. At the last uh, meeting that we, was held, I passed out the admission criteria for capital area as, uh, as well as a fact sheet. Did anyone have any questions about the admission criteria or the fact sheet that I passed out? Uh, maybe I don't quite understand <coughs> it, but the patients that we see, we only see... When you say we, I mean y'all. I'm talking about. Okay. I'm sorry, Me. not not us. You. Gonzales Mental Health, Capital right. Area. Yes. Uh, they are adults and not on uh, not uh, substance abuse and all. We Just see we see children age six to oh, through okay. through uh, adulthood. Right. They are deemed severely, chronically and Chronic, severely yes. mentally ill. Right. Right. Persons with, say, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, things that are determined severely mentally ill. Right. right. That and definition. We see children. We, you mean ascension counseling? Ascension counseling sees a you minor. Know. Okay. Very good. Understood. Okay. So yes, that's what. We, oh, that's that's right. what we. That's all. Right. Chronic and, and persistently chronic. mentally ill. Yes. Chronic. Severe, right. severe mental illness. Any other questions about the admission criteria or the fact sheet that I have? Uh, no. I don't have a question about that, but I do have a question about um, that your reporting at the board meetings and that sort of thing. I'm just trying to get a better overall while we're on structure and organization. You um, was the the original um, purpose for that so that we would have an overall picture of mental health in the parish and then could make 
better recommendations or decisions about the parish mental health based on the overall services provided? Well, I, I've only been here a few months. I know that since the board was set up, as long as, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, many people here have been here longer than I have, but I think that um, when, it w when it was set up, the, the person from, I work, since I work for the state, they would come and, and provide an overall what we're doing in the parish, right? Mm -hmm. Because so this, board be is for the, the, this board the is for the health. Ascension Parish citizens, and so we're providing services to Ascension mm -hmm. Parish citizens, mm -hmm. so we felt like it, and you all felt it was important for us to be here to, mm -hmm. pro, to tell you what's going on. Mm -hmm. Right. So in coordinating services and understanding what services are available for Right, the, what we provide, what the, the right, what Ascension okay. Council provides. And the state also gets pamphlets and leaflets and stuff off advanced stuff before we would get it and so he pro provides us with those and actually two. when the board was formed capital area was the only one providing services we didn't have the parish mental health agency at that time so they were only ones to get any information from okay and they took the tax two minutes and built the two buildings and they are parish buildings but they belong through they were paid for through the mental health uh, that's what I have a problem understanding because Roy said the mental health bill, mental health board owns nothing. Yeah. I think that's something that should be investigated we, because if it was paid for by mental health, it, and it was money. paid by by that millage. Well, well, sure, I just count. I just considered that a play on words. I really didn't, you know. But right. it is true that the buildings <laughs> were paid for, and they started collecting money in '52. And I had a newspaper article. When they broke ground on this building, I just happened to come across it last week sometimes, and I can get it for you if you need it. I, I would appreciate having a copy. And okay. the reason why I say that, I know that drainage board money paid for part of DPW, and, and it's considered the drainage board, you know, building. Mm -hmm. So right. I, I'm just, I guess I'm just asking after he said that. Well, I feel I mean, like it, it raises a big question, and it's something that maybe we ought to really find out about. And it, uh, this building belongs to the taxpayers of the same right. house. Exactly. Okay, I'm sorry. That's, a, that's absolutely okay. Any other uh, questions about the admission criteria or the fact sheet that I've had? Okay. So then I'm just going to go over the, the report from, uh, I think, are both reports in there from July and August? Maybe not. I'll, I'll just go over the August report. We have uh, a total of 952 cases. Uh, 27 of them are new cases. We provided uh, 1,150. 56 total services, mental health services, totaling 580 hours of service in um, August. We had, in Gonzales, we had 14 new aftercare referrals, 12 of which uh, kept their appointments, which is 86 percent. We had uh, 149 phone calls and 23 walk-ins into Gonzales. We had nine referrals to the substance abuse clinic, and we had eight uh, PECs, which is uh, sending people to the hospital on a, a physician emergency certificate. In Donaldsonville, we had, uh, I have that backwards, we had two aftercare referrals and one of those kept, which is 50%. We had 15 phone calls for services in Donaldsonville and one walk-in, and we had one referral to uh, the substance abuse clinic uh, from, from Donaldsonville. Any questions about any of that? Um, I do. We okay. we talked with the mayor of Donaldson mm -hmm. who came to our meeting. Enough, you may have been there at that meeting, and he talked about um, the desperate need for more services and wondered why the parish board, parish um, mental health was not there more. And I'm i just struck by the low numbers in Donaldsonville. Well, uh, again, we have uh, we serve the chronically and severely mentally ill. So mm -hmm. I, I I don't know if. I wasn't at that meeting, so I can't really address that. But I don't, and I don't know what type of services he was talking about providing. But again, we we have very strict criteria that we that we have to follow, and so these are the the people that called us for services in Donaldsonville. And I don't know if uh, the parish distinguishes between Donaldsonville calls and Gonzales calls, but that's something that we do. Um, do you have outreach efforts in Donaldsonville? Are people aware of, of your service? I, I, that's just one of the things I, I'm wondering. I don't because that was something a, he brought up. In fact, he claimed to not even know that the 
mental health center was there. I don't have a, a, a total number of cases, but about two-thirds of our cases are in, uh, in Gonzales and about one-third are in Donaldsonville. I also know that uh, the executive director of Capital Area Human Services District is meeting with the Donaldsonville mayor. I don't know when that time is or if, it, if that meeting is set up. We had the meeting set up and then the mayor had to cancel that meeting for some, something came up. I'm not sure what. But now they're in the process of setting up another meeting to address services there, um, okay. if we can provide more services. But we are there two days a week. We do serve the chronically and severely mentally ill. I think they've been there for the, in that building for uh, uh, as long okay. as I can okay. remember. They, 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 right. That, one this, that was long there before, before this one. one was right. Built. That was yes, there sir. long before. And I know. Uh, I would assume that people know that that, that building's there. We're right next to Prevost Hospital. So. Mm -hmm. Um, are you there two days a week because you have only that many people to serve, or can you only serve that many people because you're there two days a week? Okay. What what happened was the, the Donaldsonville Clinic was the main clinic. We were open five days a week, and we were open only, uh, at first, I think, three days a week here, from what I remember. Then it went to four days, and then it went to five. Um, and what happened was... The, the population in, in on this side of the river has gotten larger, and so most of our cases, our new cases, were coming in over here. Our, our clinicians were overwhelmed with cases here. The waiting list, as you can see, the waiting list is now 35, but many times it's 60 to 80 people on the waiting list in Gonzales. And so we're waiting four, six, eight weeks um, to, to, to get services here, and over there it's... It, we have 16 on the waiting list. So what happened was, and I wasn't here when they, I mean, I didn't make this decision, but they decided that they would open the, the Gonzales Clinic five days a week and, and stay in Donaldsonville two days a week. So we're still providing the services to the people in Donaldsonville and, and we could increase the number of services here so we could meet the needs of the people here. But the, but the percentage of people needing the chronically mental ill is larger in Donaldsonville than it is over here. We're just not getting the information know. out that we offer. We don't no, know that. No, 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 no. I, 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 can't, I can't say that. Yeah. All I know is that we have yeah. two-thirds of our clientele are here in Gonzales and one-third right. are there. Well, I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you the, the numbers, uh, how many people that the, I know that the population is smaller over there right from, from what I understand right. about so, less than 8,000 people okay and it's greater over here so um, so I can't tell you that the, the percentages of how many people in well Donaldson I took this services. from the mayor of Donaldson okay Field. okay and that's the only reason I have my information and they had done a study and, okay. and that's what I'm saying it's, it seems to be and it's not our fault that we can't get out and, and go door to door and tell the people you have that service I understand that it's just getting the word out there, and maybe the TV will get the sure. word out there. Sure, and this, and, this and is something that, that can definitely could, help us. And definitely help us, so we're going to count on that. Mm -hmm. Have y'all done a needs assessment at all? Since, uh, again, I've only been the manager for a few months. Since I've been here, we haven't. Now, I, I would imagine that they had done that in the past, but I, I but it, since I've been the manager, we haven't done a needs assessment. Okay. You're the new kid on the block. I so sure am. Your <laughs> what are some of the ways, other than telephone, that you can be contacted, and where do you referrals come from? Where do our referrals from here, or no, to down? your to your 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 uh, to your department? Okay. If you got referrals from Donaldsonville, where would they come from, and um, how would they contact you? Okay, they would they would contact us by phone. Okay, and we have. Uh, they can contact the, the Donaldson. We do have a local number in Donaldsonville okay. because so, this is a, a, a long distance number for some people. Okay. So they can contact us by phone. We, we get referrals from uh, the hospital. We okay. get people from, from the schools. School. Okay. Uh, Capital Area has a uh, so social worker in the elementary school in Donaldsonville. So we get uh, direct referrals from there. Um, they, we, we take walk-ins. Uh, but, but most of our... Uh, most of our... Uh, our um, Screening is done over the phone, and we take phone calls here. And our on-call worker is here, and but we do take calls in Donaldsonville as well. Is, when you talk about your services, mm -hmm. um, are you including the number of services or your caseload? Does that include the ones that your school-based counselor sees? No, that does not. That is a completely separate program. Capital Area has their own school-based program okay. that they go. They have. Uh, social workers in East Baton Rouge Parish, they have them in East Feliciano, uh, West Feliciana, I think 
East and West, Baton Rouge, and they have one counselor in Ascension. And I think part of the reason that we don't have more, and, and people could correct me if I'm wrong, but part of the reason that we don't have more in the schools in Ascension is because Susan and, and Ascension Counseling provide those services. So we have people in, we have a person in Donaldsonville uh, to access those services, but we don't have anyone here across the river because uh, Ascension Counseling provides those services. Okay. And our school-based workers tend to see uh, less chronic. They, that, the way their program is set up, they deal more with adjustment disorders and um, all the severe cases are referred to us. Any other questions? Thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Sure. Thanks. Dr. Susan Hanadol. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what figure you have for the uh, August statistics for us. Um, I've been at a two-day conference for the Office of Emergency Preparedness, <coughs> so I'll just put the figures in uh, late this afternoon, but we had uh, scheduled 984 appointments for August, and 649 of those were kept, and that's the 66 percent uh, rate. Wait a minute, I'm not following. So, you probably don't have those figures on there. What I have, oh, okay. I have the 638, that's the therapist yeah. helper figure okay. from our, our uh, software. All right. That's, um, I can get that figure that's early right. in the month, and, okay, I'm sorry. That that's we, all right. I wasn't in the office to, to get this done sooner. Um, collections, you have listed there for um, 6,355 for August this year as opposed to 4,547 last year and 4,056 the year before. In terms of personnel issues, uh, one of our substance abuse counselors resigned. I may, I may have known this last time, I don't know. Um, her position has been filled, and one, another retired, actually he resigned, he was not able to retire, and his position, uh, he's a substance abuse counselor, we're not uh, at this point going to fill that position, uh, I'm not really sure the statistics support uh, that position right now, so I'd like to keep it empty for a few months and work with the counselors to see whether or not we actually have to fill that. Um, it, it may be come the first of the year we'll decide to eliminate that position or what I really hope to do is to initiate an intensive outpatient substance abuse treatment program which would require groups four nights a week in which case we could build a position to work in the intensive outpatient treatment program. So uh, we don't have that program right now, but that would be my, my plan for that. But I didn't want to just bring somebody in and have them uh, not be busy enough right now. Under policies and procedures, um, I, I didn't receive any feedback from uh, some of you, but I went ahead and sent the policies to legal. It's not too late to make any changes, so if you have any um, revisions that you want me to make in the policies, if you please give them to me, I'll be glad to make them and send the revisions to legal. Under grants, I'm very disappointed to announce that we did not get our adolescent treatment grant, uh, the one that we worked so hard on in January, February, and March. Um, our numbers were not big enough. Remember, we focused that grant on the Donisonville area, and um, the grants that were awarded were a, I'm sorry, were awarded with for two and three times the number of people that, that we had hoped to serve in our grant. So we will definitely apply next year and we will identify a larger service population. It's very important when you write a grant, you can't overpromise what you can do. If you say you're going to serve 50 people, you have to serve 50 people. You can serve 60 people, but you can't serve 40 people. And um, so we were very conservative in making those estimates. Um, I think Roy Katz covered the issues about the board truancy assessment uh, what, what program. What did Mr. Katz cover? Excuse me. What did I, Mr. Have, Katz I have I have penciled in something that says agency involvement on your form. That was those were number six. Number six. On the Truancy Assessment Center, um, Wait, I'm, I haven't... skip number six, how about that? Number seven, Truancy Assessment Centers, 
uh, we're working on an, a memorandum of uh, an interagency agreement for the uh, task and fins use of the two Donisonville offices. Um, Brenda, you weren't here, but we're um, sharing office space with fins. One office for FINS, one office for the Truancy Assessment Center that FINS operates under a grant. And um, they are going to see only Ascension residents at the Donaldsonville office. And they do primarily home visits and um, school visits. So they, they asked every agency that's con uh, participating in the Truancy Assessment Center task force to contribute something. So that was our contribution. So we're getting the legal document to uh, formalize that arrangement. And under facilities maintenance, I'm pleased to announce nothing broke this month. <laughs> we had air conditioning for one month. Anybody have any questions? I, I have one question. So Y'all don't have any intensive outpatient treatment right now? We don't. That requires nine hours of programming, and we only have, um, we have the nine hours of programming, but it's, uh, some of it is aftercare, relapse prevention. It's not, uh, it's not set up to meet the criteria for an intensive outpatient. That's one of my projects. And that's not something y'all ever had? No. Okay. okay. We, so, want it, we want it very much. So okay. That's next up to, to work on. Okay. Question on number three. Mm -hmm. uh, the resignations, were there any grievances on any part of court? Not that I know about, but you certainly, uh, you need to talk to Roy Katz because they do a, an exit interview with everybody mm -hmm. when they leave, and I, I never know, you know, what they discuss. Do we know if they've identified um, uh, salary as an issue? Salary is definitely an issue. We, we are able to start people who are not licensed at a higher salary than the state can start them. But the state overtakes us in no time at all. And if someone's been here two or three years, then they're pretty much at a fixed level and they fall way behind the state for, the, for a similar professional. Why is that, Susan? Because they're not paid enough money. Oh, well, I know that, but we, we, we basically have a salary range that should allow for somebody to be able to be raised. Well, I'm talking about 25% below. I mean, then, then we it, need it's to, significant. I think that they're working on that. Yeah, they I think are. We've been working on that. I've been using the, the state scale to bring, to bring that, that, up. that right. uh, I asked to, to raise right. it. So even if we ra raise our people to mid-range of the state for the comparable number of years of experience, um, that would be a significant increase right. for everybody. Okay. I want to grant funds for drug free. That expires in October. At the end of September, uh -huh. this month. End of September. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we we do not have another grant to cover that, or we cover it we, under prevention services are covered under a grant from um, Capital Area Human Services District. We have a grant to provide. Uh, and which grant is that on here? Uh, do we have Jill's report? Okay, this is what I'm yeah. 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 It's okay, so on, on the substance abuse grant. In a substance abuse prevention, 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 education. And this is the treatment. So those two take the place of the drug free? No, those were in addition to drug free communities. So so the drug free community, we're not renewing that. Right. No, we didn't. It, it wasn't up for renewal. It, it had to be reapplied Re for. Reapplied for. Right. And it, it had to go back to, to be competitive with everybody applying for the first time. So we didn't have any uh, advantage. So we didn't apply for it? No, we did not okay. apply for it. Didn't reapply. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the government safe that's 2007, and the emergency shelter, that is really, we just handled that gonna for move the parish. And that's going to move to the parish in January. Okay, and then, didn't we have a, did not have a sheet with our uh, groups that meet? Did you ask that? that one in my package? I'll be glad to send you an update. Okay, then. I just thought I had come across it. Okay. Next on the agenda, then, is the attorneys 
approve of the pay? Mm -hmm. Motion that we approve to pay the district the attorney. District attorney. Yes. Second. And the budget reports are also in our folder. And, and I also did put the, um, for the 2007 proposed budget, I went ahead and put that spreadsheet that y'all had asked for with the employee's yes. name listed. Okay. Now you will see that it's um, there is a percentage on the side. And it, what it means oh, that's is it's it's a hundred percent no, it's a hundred percent taken out of the mental health fund. Oh, but some okay. employees you may see okay. fifty percent. Well, fifty percent may come out of mental health. Fifty percent may come out of substance abuse. So, the okay. first column right here is their full salary, and then the second column right there is the percentage of what's paid out of the department. Okay. Let me ask you another. Do, do we have a cap on the salaries that these can draw where we can see it there too? Uh -huh. She's talking about the For them to get a, a raise, because the parish has caps on certain things. I don't know which, since we did not see the policy <laughs> manual by the ordinance, I understood we were supposed to see it before it passed, not that it doesn't much good. But I was just wondering, if we were saying they were under salary, so I was trying to figure out if they, they if we pay in them the max they can draw now, or if there's no, some no, way. No, we, no, we're not. We don't bring them, we don't start people at the top of the salary. Okay, but rarely. Rarely. to say, I'm talking about when they're getting ready to leave and they need an increase. Do we have a percentage of how high we can raise some of these salaries somewhere? I, I don't, no? I don't rate, well, you know, everybody is in relation to everybody else and also exactly. in relation to their number of years of experience. That's exactly what I'm asking. So, so I, how I can get you the parish salary scale, is that what you'd like yeah. to see? Yeah, okay. well I can get that, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Because we were talking about trying to save some of the ones that we pay for them to get license and all from the state here, like I said, you hire them at a bigger sign, then you can't keep them. So we're trying to find out by the power scale if we can raise these salaries. Mm -hmm. okay. Flat $10,000 a person would do just nicely. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> a lot of us would like to get that kind of raise. But, um, <laughs> Who me? <laughs> oh, you, you are, you are to come. I don't know you leave the new kid out of it. <laughs> don't tell Roy I said that. <laughs> And then this is your regular budget here, and <laughs> yes, percentage-wise, 71, 71, 66, 52, 56, That's uh -oh. revenue, baby. Huh? That's revenue, so actually we over what we expected in revenue. So that's a good Oh, this thing. is a revenue. <laughs> oh, okay. I was just, yeah, great. Okay. Good news. <laughs> now then this is the mental health. Okay. We're in trouble, what, on the maintenance of the building? Right. Actually, when you approved the budget too, there was those um, on that sheet those two amendments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't occur until November. So you're uh, going to still see those negative amounts until November when the mm -hmm. funds are actually mm -hmm. transferred. All right. right. Any other big surprise? No? Mm -hmm. Okay, darling. Thank you. Oh, business. Other than I don't know if it's old business or new business, but I do want an attorney at our next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, right. don't check this. Yes. Huh? I don't think I'll be here. You don't think you'll be here? No. Okay, well, I'll, I'll contact him. I can mm -hmm. handle it. And don't worry about it. And I'll, I'll, I can get the, get the minutes done up. I'm going to take care of that mm -hmm. problem, too. Like I said, we're going to have problems. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Under old business, I, just, or I guess I just want, you know, Roy said that Celeste will not be here anymore. Do you know why? My understanding is that the parish is not allowing parish employees to serve as secretaries to the board. Is that it? Is that's, that, what, that's what they said. There was a letter it. sent last April and, and I... Exactly. Yeah, I had it. was sent by Don... It was sent by Don... And the reason why... I'm terrible saying, with names. Uh, the, reason, the reason why yes. I'm asking okay. that... I mean, Celeste, do you have a problem coming? to the regular meeting? But it's not up to Celeste. I, I, I'm, I'm just asking, if, you know, if she has a problem, because the, the reason why I'm saying that, the meeting started at 5 is probably going to soon adjourn. We're not paying somebody but a, a, maybe an hour and a half overtime, mm -hmm. you know, to say the least. And so I'm just trying to set some guidelines here because I'm going to get into this and, mm -hmm. and, and find out about it.
there's no reason why, if they're just taking an hour and a half a month, that this parish cannot provide a secretary to this board. And that's something well, y'all can work right. out. Right. So parish. that's how much this board is respected, though. We walk in here tonight, and, and we know none of this. You, don't, you, you cannot be prepared for a meeting if you do not have the facts, period. And okay, then, new business. Guess, I've I'm been trying to discuss old, that with you for old, two months, but when? Because you've been sick and you weren't oh, well, at the that's July true. meeting, and then we didn't have the August meeting, so that's why I hadn't come up. But we did discuss it before July. And, and, and I've called to to set up appointments so that we could meet in interim meetings, and and that hadn't turned out either. So okay. And well, I've, I've been out for three it. months. I admit that, and, and I, I haven't see. kept up. So. I'm going by what Cheryl has just asked Celeste. Did you have a problem with being the secretary for this board? I don't put her. I don't, don't think put her in that position. Yeah, no, we need to no, know. No, 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 it's not her. her it's not her decision. Don't, don't put her. On but she spot. can answer. All right. She's alive and well. She's, she's oh, rather not. Okay. She's not. Yeah. Good. That's yeah. fine. New business. Old business. The um, oh, old the business. I'm names sorry. on the buildings. That's still on the table. Oh. I don't have my Let's, thing tonight. I can we move it to next month's agenda? We can agenda. move the uh, names, the discussion that we were having about the names on the mental health building until it, the next month. It was table, meeting. so I'd appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, you. ma'am. Okay. New business? Secretary. Well, we can't discuss that tonight either. We will be prepared. Just put it on the agenda. Put it on the agenda, right. And last is 6 o'clock. Can we get in her journal? Motion that we are done. Second. Thank you.